The Ruko 500 is a Danish residential lock which was initially manufactured in the 1930s and is still in production today. The driver pins in this lock have changed over time, starting with standard drivers, then hourglass drivers, followed by gin drivers, and finally barrel spools. This is not surprising as Ruko was purchased by ASA in 1952, and this is the general progression of drivers that we see in ASA products over time. What sets the Ruko 500 apart is how they manufacture the plug to interact with the gin and barrel drivers. In most locks, this is accomplished by countermilling. Countermilling is the widening of the pin chamber below the shear line so that it matches the shape of the driver pin. This is what gives the gin spool driver its unique picking characteristics as it will directly interact with and get locked into the plug. This topic is covered extensively in my video number 21, The Theory of Picking Gin Spool Drivers. Instead of traditional countermilling, Ruko milled off the top of the plug above the pin chamber and then encased the plug with a sleeve. This gives similar functionality to direct countermilling. Both of these designs create a space for the gin driver to interact with the plug and require manual counter rotation or float picking to successfully open the lock. In the Ruko 500, the tops of the first four chambers are milled away about the short axis of the lock. Then a sleeve is wrapped around the plug. Ruko actually produced two types of sleeves for their gin driver lock. The older variety of sleeve has an oval cutout for the pins. The newer one has a circular cutout. Once the sleeve is wrapped around the plug, it is fixed into place by these depressions which are pressed into the plug creating a stationary sleeve. In the next section of this video, I will compare the two sleeve types to see if the shape of their holes has an effect on picking. I will be using the same housing, the same pins, and the same keyway so that I can directly compare the two sleeves. Before we continue, I wanted to express my deep gratitude to Rune International for donating these locks for this analysis. Okay, let's get to picking. Okay, so I'll be using a Multi-Pick V04, which is one of Multi-Pick's deepest hooks in 4mm thickness. This is because I'll be picking from the bottom of the keyway, and the Ruko RK1, also known as the RU1D keyway, is very paracentric. I'll be using clockwise tension with two tension wrenches, so manual counter rotation will be in the counterclockwise direction. The binding order and the general picking sequence is very similar between the two sleeves. The first step is to get all the gins into the milling. Gins 1 and 2 start off in the milling, so I alternate between 3, 4, and 5 until I get a false set. Then float pick all the gins. Pin chamber 5 does not have counter milling, so it will not have to be float picked. Okay, 5, 4, 3, 5, 4, 3, 4, 5, 4, 5. We're in a false set as all the gins are in the counter milling. Just float pick three. Now float picked four, float picking two, one, and we're open. So that was the oval sleeve and it was relatively straightforward. The gin set pretty nicely and none of them really dropped. So let's get this guy apart. Lock him back up. And this is a special follower designed specifically for the sleeve. We're going to start dumping out the key pins. And this is the oval sleeve and you can see the milling underneath the sleeve. That's where the gins get trapped. Pulling out the drivers. And remember, key pins and drivers are going to be the same for both of these picks so that we can compare them. I'm going to arrange all these key pins to make them look pretty for you guys. And let's take a closer look. Looking good. Let's try that sleeve with the circular cutouts. So this essentially picks in the same fashion as the oval Ruko. The big difference is that three, four, and five keep dropping as you attempt to set them. This is known as ping ponging. To minimize this, you need very precise tension control. I'm now alternating picking 
three, four, and five until I get a false set. That signifies that all the gins are in the counter milling. Remember, one and two start off in the counter milling. And that's the false set. It was very subtle. I'm float picking four right now. Five dropped, so I reset that. And I'm refloating number four again, resetting five. Now I'm float picking number three. They all feel set and not springy, which means something is caught on the lip of the plug. So I'm going to rock and nudge each one until I get a false set. And there it is. Now I'm going to float pick number two. That's it. Flow pick number one. And we're open. Nice. And that's quite surprising. This lock with the circular sleeve installed tends to ping pong much more. I got pretty lucky this time. I'm going to take this one apart again. Lock it up. Use a special follower. Dump out all the key pins. and show you that sleeve with the circular cutouts. There it is. So here's my final analysis. This sleeve with the circular cutouts, once you control for all other factors, is significantly more challenging than the one with the oval cutouts. It drops the gins much more frequently and it ping pongs so much more. I can't make a generalization on all of these sleeves as there may be other factors that may be coming into play, for example, sleeve wear. Having said that, I was quite surprised by my picking experience with these two sleeves. I would have assumed that the sleeve with the oval cutouts would have been much more challenging. I thought that given the oval geometry, that the tapering of the lateral section of the oval would cause the gin to be bound into the counter milling much more tightly, which would require much more counter rotation to release them and therefore more dropping of the set pins. Okay, well that's it. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you at the next one.